All right, guys, tonight we're going to be taking a look at the Landpart HHG01 handheld three axis gimbal stabilizer for smartphones and GoPros. Now, there's a variety of other uh, three axis gimbal um, stabilizers on the market right now. Uh, most of them are made um, specifically for GoPros. <clears throat> there's uh, only a, a couple that are made also for smartphones. This one uh, can be used both for GoPros and for smartphones. Um, I was planning a trip uh, recently, a uh, cruise vacation, and um, checked out some uh, YouTube uh, reviews and some videos made with this uh, Landpart uh, gimbal and um, really um, caught my eye as being easy to use and uh, pretty versatile as far as being able to interchange a variety of different phones and um, GoPros pretty quickly. So uh, that's why I chose to purchase this one. Uh, I must say, uh, you know, I used it um, on my recent five-day cruise and got a lot of great footage. It seemed to really uh, smooth out videos very well. Um, also, one thing um, I will note is that it was uh, definitely a conversation starter. Um, just walking around with this thing on the ship, um, I had so many other passengers uh, come up to me and ask what it was, um, you know, where, where I got it. Um, I had to answer <laughs> in actually a variety of different languages uh, from international travelers. Um, so it was uh, pretty pretty interesting to see the, uh, the reaction. Uh, even uh, ship crew people uh, were asking me about it. Um, and then when I was on the islands, um, on excursions and things like that, I had uh, taxi drivers, just uh, people in the different stores on the islands ask me uh, about the stabilizer. So uh, definitely an attention getter. Um, and, you know, I, I, I got several hours of footage, which um, was really much smoother than I could have done uh, handheld. And, um, you know, I've got uh, a variety of other more, you know, mechanical uh, stabilizers, um, like fly cams and things like that, but those are much bulkier um, and, and definitely not something that you want to just carry around with you when you're on a vacation. Um, so in that way, I think uh, this, this gimbal was great. Um, now, <clears throat> I did run into some problems uh, toward the end of my vacation. This particular unit uh, that I got uh, seems to be um, defective or, or developed a, a problem, which I'll go into uh, later in this review. Um, luckily, I ordered it through Amazon, so as soon as I got back, I emailed Amazon and they've already uh, shipped me out a replacement unit. Uh, and I've noticed that there's uh, some differences between the two units. Uh, the initial unit, which I just got, you know, maybe 10 days prior, um, and then this replacement unit that they sent me. Uh, so clearly, uh, you know, Landpart has been making some revisions uh, to this design um, since it's been introduced. And I think, um, you know, some of these revisions that I see just on an um, initial glance are, are really good ones, which I think um, will make this a much more um, uh, robust and easier to use uh, uh, gimbal. Um, one key thing that uh, they haven't addressed yet is, um, you know, I, I don't see any way of attaching a strap to this or um, being able to attach it to a tripod or anything. Uh, not that most people will want to attach it to a tripod, but um, you know, I, I was also lugging around some other camera equipment uh, with me uh, with like a black rapid strap and it would have been nice if this had uh, some sort of attachment uh, where you could attach a, a D-ring or something so you could uh, carry it on a strap uh, to get your hands free to be able to use uh, other cameras and things. Um, so that's one thing uh, that I'd like to see on maybe a future version. Um, but anyway, uh, I'll go through and uh, we'll do a quick unboxing, go over what's in the case, and then uh, do a brief comparison of, of the two different uh, versions that I have right now. Um, this one obviously is going to be going back because it's defective. Now Lampart is a uh, company out of China that produces um, a variety of different camera equipment, uh, video equipment, uh, such as um, camera rigs and things like that. Let's open up the original one first. Uh, as you can see, the gimbal comes in a nice um, kind of woven nylon uh, case with a zipper. 
Uh, it's not rigid, but it, it's definitely uh, padded and um, protects the, the contents pretty well. Uh, there's a nice carrying handle, and there's uh, two D-ring loops uh, and an included strap where you can uh, strap it over your shoulder. Opening up the case, when you get inside you'll notice that the, the lid is padded uh, with a nice uh, gray foam. Um, there's a brief instruction manual. Um, the nice thing about this gimbal is that uh, it's already uh, pre-tuned from the factory, uh, so you don't really have to plug it into the computer and um, set up any uh, of the settings uh, yourself. So, looking inside the case, uh, what you get is a, a rechargeable battery, a uh, 15 uh, watt hour uh, rechargeable battery that uh, slots into the, the grip of the, um, the gimbal. Uh, there's a power switch at the bottom of the, uh, the battery. And when you uh, click it on, it uh, shows you how much uh, battery charge is left. Um, this switch is also used to turn on the gimbal, so make sure that uh, after you check the battery, just turn it off before you uh, plug it into the gimbal itself. Uh, over in this slot is the, uh, the strap that I mentioned uh, for the, uh, the case to carry it over your shoulder. Um, there's also a, a wall charger uh, that plugs directly into the battery. Um, you can see there's a, a connector in the battery itself. You plug the battery in uh, to charge. Um, this is a, a universal adapter and so it has a, a variety of different um, uh, connector uh, styles for um, international use. So, there's this European style, and then there's the, uh, the, U the North American uh, style connector here. Now onto the gimbal itself. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's finished in kind of a matte black uh, rubberized finish um, with kind of green anodized accents on the, uh, the gimbal motors. Um, like I said, it's a three-axis uh, brushless uh, motorized gimbal, and it has a, uh, a spring-loaded clamp for attaching your smartphone. Um, <clears throat> there's a Landpart logo on the back of the, uh, the clamp area for holding the phone. Um, there are some hard stops that prevent the... Uh, the gimbal from just swinging around uh, wildly. Um, and then there's a counterweight uh, here on this L-shaped bracket which allows you to uh, balance uh, the gimbal for your phone once you have it on the cradle. Um, now this is the way it comes from the factory with this uh, spring-loaded uh, clamp for a uh, smartphone. But also available is a um, an optional piece which you can attach. Uh, you have to remove the clamp first and then you can attach this piece onto that area which is made for uh, a GoPro. Um, now the GoPro attachment uh, because of the included uh, frame um, is sized only for GoPro uh, 3 and 4. Uh, it won't work on uh, any earlier GoPros. Um, also, it won't work on any third-party um, action cameras uh, because the, the hole cutouts are, are specific to the GoPro. Um, I tried attaching a uh, GoPro Hero 2 onto the uh, bracket by taking the frame off, um, but the weighting was uh, so far off uh, because the GoPro Hero 2 is thicker that it, it didn't work with this gimbal. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So, um, like I said, this, this gimbal worked really well. Um, I'll attach some footage uh, from my trip uh, at the end of this video so you can get a better idea of um, how it looks with the, the stabilized footage. Um, the one thing I will note is uh, as soon as I uh, got this out of the box and turned it on, I, I could hear a, a faint uh, humming sound coming from the motors. 
Um, even though I had the, uh, the gimbal uh, balanced, I'll show you um, how it looks when it's balanced. So you put the, the phone in with the camera facing out and the screen facing towards you. You just slide it into the bracket. So you can see the camera's facing out, the screen's facing towards you. Um, and then this is used to uh, adjust the balance uh, front and back. So the best way I found to do it um, quickly is install the battery in, in the bottom. The battery is directional, so it only fits one way. It won't fit the other way. Um, you'll, you'll meet some resistance, so don't force it in. All right, so once the, the battery's in there, then um, it's weighted enough and balanced that it, it will stand on its own. Uh, so standing like this, then uh, you can kind of see if it tilts to one side more than the other. You can see it kind of seems to be favoring the right side. So when that happens, you can just kind of gently nudge the camera uh, to one side to uh, adjust the balance. Seems like I've gone a little f too far in the one direction. All right, and then uh, the front and back balance, you'll want to um, kind of Tilt the camera front and back and see if it um, returns to center. So it seems pretty well balanced now. Um, <clears throat> so even though I went through those steps to balance the uh, the phone, when I turned it on, it sounded like the, the motors were straining a little bit initially. Uh, but it seemed to work well uh, for my trip. Um, towards the end of the trip, though, um, the buzzing became much louder. Um, the vibrations uh, from the motors uh, became so pronounced that the uh, video started uh, um, getting a little distorted and um, so unfortunately uh, it appears that there was some uh, maybe manufacturing flaw in this one and so that's why I requested a replacement from Amazon. Um, so I'll show you on this one what it looks like. Uh, Alright so we've got the, the gimbal on now I'm going to turn the power on. It takes a couple takes a couple minutes or a couple seconds to um, auto calibrate but you can see it's vibrating so much that the entire thing is just spinning uh, around um, and I'm not even not even holding it you probably hear on the camera the sound um, anyway and also um, because of the vibration the, the entire gimbal is, is uh, gradually skews down where the uh, this, the screen is uh, skewed to the left, as you can see. Um, so there's, there's clearly something uh, wrong with this one. So I'm going to open up the, uh, the replacement unit that I got and kind of show you uh, the differences. It appears that there's been uh, some revision, um, and some modifications to the design. All right, so <clears throat> taking a quick look, uh, the original unit that I got is here on the left. The replacement that Amazon sent me is here on the right. You'll see, um, you know, basically they're pretty much the same. Uh, I'm, I'm going to point out the key differences now. Um, on the original unit, uh, the L bracket for the uh, the counterweight is uh, directly attached to the uh, the casing itself um, with two screws, which are coming through the casing and into the L bracket. Now, on my trip, I noticed that um, this L bracket loosened up considerably to the point where I was afraid that the entire L bracket uh, and counterweight was going to fall off. So I had actually had to get a piece of tape and uh, tape this L bracket down because um, the case is held together with these uh, Allen head screws, uh, these machine screws, and um, I didn't have any tools available to me on the ship to uh, be able to open it up and, and um, tighten down the... Uh, the L bracket. So um, that's one key area which I think anyone who has this uh, design uh, gimbal 
should um, probably put some thread lock in those um, screws to prevent it from loosening up. Uh, because if this L bracket falls off, then the entire uh, gimbal balance is going to be off and um, it probably wouldn't work anymore. Um, so looking at the, uh, the replacement unit that they sent me, uh, you'll see that they've modified the design of this L bracket. Um, probably for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, there's kind of a rail uh, that's attached to the case. Um, and this rail is adjustable uh, with this thumb screw now. So you can take the entire thing off and, and just leave the rail in place. There's three different uh, slots now uh, where you can um, adjust the L bracket uh, based on the, the shape and the weighting of your, your phone that you attach. So, you can see you know, I have it attached to the, uh, the outermost opening. And um, other than that, uh, it appears maybe the L bracket might be slightly longer um, than the previous model. Um, also, uh, another difference is uh, that there's the Landpart logo now emblazoned on the sides of the casing, uh, which uh, the previous version was uh, without logos other than the, um, the embossed one on the back of the case. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, uh, I think uh, for people with larger phones, they've also included a second bracket, uh, which is slightly larger um, to accommodate uh, wider phones. Um, the original one that I got uh, only came with the single bracket, uh, which probably is big enough for uh, an iPhone 6 Plus without a case, um, but it would probably be a very tight fit. Um, this newer bracket, um, you know, probably would fit uh, even those larger phones. I don't have a 6 Plus uh, to test with this uh, gimbal, so I can't say for sure, but um, this, this larger bracket definitely opens up much further uh, than, the, than the original one, probably by another uh, half centimeter or so. Um, so in terms of operation, uh, this new one is definitely much smoother uh, than my old one. It doesn't have the vibration issue and it doesn't um, have the humming um, of the motors when you turn it on. So this is a uh, <clears throat> going to be balancing an iPhone uh, 5S now just for demonstration purposes. You can see that the balancing of the 5S is different than the um, than the six because of uh, the difference in size of the case. Turning it to the side, you can see it's tilted slightly downward, so I'm going to take the weight a little bit further back, tighten it down. Probably could go back just a little bit further. So that seems to be better. And then the side to side balance seems to be pretty good right there. Um, even when the, the gimbal's turned off, uh, the motion of the motors seems to be um, a lot smoother. Uh, the other one um, seemed to have some resistance at certain points. Uh, again, it might have just been defective or it might have just been the, um, the way the initial uh, version was designed. So let's turn it on and see how it behaves. So again, it takes a couple seconds for the, uh, the gimbal to auto calibrate. Then once it's calibrated, then really uh, there's hardly any vibration at all in the motors. Uh, whereas the other one um, was vibrated very strongly to the point where as you, you saw in the, the previous um, clip, the entire thing was uh, rotating on the table on its own. Um, so now you can see 
the gimbal. This particular uh, three-axis gimbal um, is always in follow mode. It, you can't um, adjust the different modes unlike some of the other uh, GoPro uh, gimbals on the market. Um, but the, the, the key thing that attracted me to this one was because um, you could really uh, easily attach any uh, smartphones to it um, and stabilize the smartphones and not just have to uh, use the GoPros. Um, so one thing I noticed on the, uh, the previous model was if you <clears throat> really had the, the handle at a, uh, uh, an acute angle, uh, the entire gimbal would kind of go out of control and would start um, uh, vibrating and, and um, going nuts. I'll, I'll show you uh, in a little bit um, what that looks like. All right, so here's the, uh, the original uh, gimbal that I received. I'm going to kind of show you how it um, reacts poorly if you uh, take the handle a little too far in any particular direction. So I'm going to turn it on. It's going to auto calibrate. Again, um, you can see it's kind of off from the beginning. Um, but if you pick it up and have it centered, uh, if you take it and tilt the handle too far, it will start uh, vibrating uh, pretty pretty abruptly and then it, and then it just kind of goes out of control so uh, that's some behavior that I noticed with this one um, if you grab it and kind of recenter it it'll uh, reset for a little while um, but then as soon as you kind of go too far again it just it goes crazy again so um, I'm not sure if that's just a particular flaw with the, the, the unit that I got or whether that's uh, um, one of the peculiarities of this initial uh, version, um, but it's definitely not, uh, not present uh, as much on the, uh, the second version that they sent me. Um, anyway, this is my uh, brief review of the uh, Landpart uh, 3-axis um, gimbal for smartphones and GoPros. Um, I'm going to put all the links to uh, where you can buy this as well as to uh, Landpar's website in the, uh, the notes below. Anyway, uh, feel free to comment on this video if you have any uh, other input or uh, if any other owners are out there um, who can comment on the, the different versions uh, of the gimbal. Anyway, well thanks for watching. Why the hell you can't keep a date? I mean to say, you're wearing out all my patience. You must be thinking I'm a kuno mono. Lionel, this is your last chance. After that, when it's me and you. Uh-huh, darling, it's all right. We go fix up Saturday night. Don't worry to fight. You go get it Saturday night. You bring your promise. You're taking a risk. So busy, and how you have to cook for the man. All the time I'm taking it easy, but this time I'm gonna break your hand. I got a piece of wood with a big nut to protect myself from your damn tricks. So when the time come and you ain't on spot, well prepare your body for licks. Uh huh, darling, it's alright. We gon' fix up Saturday night. Don't worry, no fight. You gon' get it Saturday night. You break your promise, taking a rest. I 
Mad up, I'm confused. Them lies driving me insane. It's three weeks you make an excuse. Well, if you don't want me, tell me plain. When your child come to collect money, he and all say you're coming just now. And when I call you, you acting funny. But you picking me like a cow. Ha uh ha, -huh. darling, it's all right. We go fix up Saturday night. Don't worry to fight, you go get it Saturday night. You break your promise, taking a risk. 